huge. We still have it today. Some things never change. Jesus alone can't get us to heaven. He needs our help. It's like, okay, Jesus gets us started, and then we have to finish it. And um, Luther and others like him ask the question, well, how much more do we need to do? How much do we need to do in order to make sure that we get into heaven? Uh, because Luther's great fear was that he couldn't do enough to get in. And if he was here today, he would say, I can't do enough. None of us can do enough. And this uh, moment, uh, the nailing of these 95 sentences, and really he was questioning, he was beginning to question this thought as to how we can be saved. Uh, by the time Luther comes around, there was this thing called the selling of indulgences. You could buy a piece of paper that said on blah, 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 your name, has purchased blah, 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 years out of hell or purgatory, and that he or family member will be able to go to heaven. And, and Luther kept asking, how, how do we know this is true? And he begins to question this. And through the years, he comes to the conclusion that that thought process is wrong. Those who believe that are going to be destined for hell. And so, we have this. Now, there are some things that kind of led up to that, that were wonderful things um, that happened in 1560. Remember, that 1517-ish um, is when Luther's delight starts to go on. And there were a couple things that happened in 1516 in, uh, in Europe. First was this. Let me know what that is. Coffee. Coffee was introduced to Europe in 1516. This is huge. I don't know how huge it is. But it's huge what that means. The other bigger thing was this thing. The Greek New Testament. Before it was the Latin Bible. And the, the problem was this. St. Jerome, who translated the Bible from Greek to Latin, did a wonderful job, but he missed some very important key passages in what Jesus said. And it really led itself to works righteousness. You do this, that, and the other thing, and you can earn salvation. And yet the Greek text, the Greek Bible, and this is from Matthew, they went back to the original language, they, and it, but it doesn't say that that we are saved what by Jesus has done for us. That's what happens many times when you translate from one language to another. Sometimes something gets lost in the translation. And so, with this, this was huge. Huge that the Reformation be set in place. God put this into place. Huge. Because Luther stayed up many nights. I think he's drinking a lot of coffee. That's what that is. All right. Greatest invention ever? What's the greatest invention ever? By this guy. You may know who that is? Who is this? His first name is Johann. We're all called Johann back in those days. Gutenberg. What did Johann Gutenberg invent? The movable type press. In other words, back in those days, if you wanted something copied like a Bible, you had to and have it written out by hand. What he did was that he would make these, the letters, and you could put them all together, and you could run off hundreds and thousands of copies of the same thing in a very short period of time. So that by the time we get to Luther, the Bible is printed in mass form. Everybody's, you know, you could have a, a, a copy of it or have access to a copy to that. So this printing press was huge as a disman you know, got out the information. Before this, if, if uh, information was to go out through Europe, it would take months, if not years, to happen. With the printing press, it took uh, weeks, if, if, if no more than a month. Now you might say, that doesn't seem fast. Well, this is the internet in the 15th century, 16th century. How, you know, how quickly that our information goes out today. That was the equivalent of that, that people would go, wow, 
this only happened last week and we know about it and we're 500 miles away? Yes. And so they would have that. And so that happened in 1440. In, just real quick here, Martin Luther's parents was, was uh, Hans and Margarita. Um, and you can see their dates here. Um, uh, Hans was uh, a smelter. He, he uh, worked with um, copper and lead and things like that. Um, was very successful. Luther was born in 1483, was baptized on, uh, um, in uh, November 11th on St. Martin's Day, hence his name, um, and things like that. Um, at first, um, they, uh, uh, Luther was born in uh, Eisleben. Eventually, they would move to Erfurt, and then, um, and then Eisenach, and then eventually, Luther would one, uh, end up in a town called Wittenberg. And then, at the end of his life, he dies in Eisleben, uh, kind of clean circle. So there you go. Then he goes to law school, life changes. I'm going to be talking with this to the kids when we get closer to the Reformation. Um, but at first he goes to be a lawyer. His dad wants him to be a lawyer. He wants the, uh, Hans wants his son Martin to help with the business. And the best way he can do that is to be a lawyer. So he starts to do that. Um, in 1503, he has a very dangerous accident. He, he, gets up, cut, he almost dies, almost bleeds out. Um, but then uh, he survives that. He has the death of a friend um, as well. And so he's struggling with all this, and he's wondering about what's happening with life and what does God want him to do. And on July 2nd, 1505, he's traveling uh, from his parents' house uh, back to school, and a thunderstorm happens, and it almost kills him. And he makes a promise that he would become a monk. Um, he makes a promise to Saint Anne, uh, who is the mother of Mary, the mother of our Lord. So he, she makes that promise. He's not a Lutheran here. He's a good old Roman Catholic, praying to the saints and things like that. Well, he does, and he becomes an Augustinian monk, uh, which was the most rigorous at the time, uh, academically, physically, um, and there. And while he's there, there's, his, uh, there's a guy named Johann von Staupitz, who really is his father confessor. He's really this, if you want to say, when does Lutheranism, our understanding that we're saved by God's grace during this time, it really starts with this guy, because he understood that. He would say, we are saved by God's grace. Only by God's grace. That's how we are saved. And he would tell that to Luther, and eventually Luther would get that. Um, and so he becomes uh, St. Augustine, uh, who lived some 1,200 years earlier. Um, and uh, with that, um, so Luther goes to Wittenberg, um, and he becomes a professor in the university there. He also um, becomes uh, the pastor in the church there. And so, uh, in fact, the, this church is still there. The university is still there. Well, his boss was known as Frederick the Wise, and he's the one that hired him. And, um, and because he, want, he started a university, and he wants kids people to come to study at the university. So um, he, he asked Luther to do that. Well, actually, he didn't ask. He told Luther he was doing that, uh, that uh, Luther was going to teach there. And Luther would teach. In 1513, he would teach about um, Psalms and Romans, Galatians. And this is really, um, he's reading these books for the first time in the original language, and he's beginning to see that we are saved by God's grace. That by God's mercy we have the forgiveness of sins. Not in what we do or we don't do, but we have that. Um, and so he, we have this. It's beginning during that time, he begins to understand this wonderful concept that we are uh, justification by faith through grace. That we are saved solely by what Jesus did and our trusting in that um, as well. And so this is, this is what happened. Now, the Pope at the time was Pope Leo X. Pope Leo X was building the Basilica in Rome. He needed to raise money, lots of money, lots and lots of money. Um, and so he decided that he would sell what these, these called indulgences. Um, because uh, as the St. Peter's Basilica was going on, Michelangelo was there, he's cleaning the ceilings, he's doing all this work, beautiful stuff. But 
he needs all this money to make that happen. Um, and so, how do you make sure that people will want to give you their money? Well, you sell them indulgences. You sell them the promise that they'll get into heaven, the, the gift of eternal life. They can purchase it. Forget what Jesus did. Oh, he started it. But you can finish it. And so you have this, this papal indulgence, um, and, and people could buy it. And Luther's thinking about this, he's going, but what about we're saved by God's grace and grace alone? What about Jesus doing it all for us on the cross? Why are we having this problem? Well, Pope Leo X said this guy, guy named John Tetzel, who was a salesman. He was a monk, but he was a salesman. In fact, he even had this little phrase. I wonder if I have that picture. Oh, yes. As soon as the coin in the coffer is, meaning they had a box, you would drop the, the coin in, the soul from purgatory springs. So it was like a very visual, oh, clink. And your great, great grandfather, um, who's in purgatory, you can get him out of purgatory. Because you didn't want to show up in purgatory with your great, great grandfather saying, what did you do to help me get out of here? You don't want to do that. Because you have to hear that for many, many years. So you would put that coin in and clink. So this idea of buying salvation, buying my way out of purgatory, out of hell, so that I get to go home to heaven, that was the thought. And Luther really struggled with that. And so we have this, the, these indulgences that he writes. I mean, not indulgences, the, the 95 theses, these sentences. And the first one starts out, where our Lord and Savior calls us to follow him, he asks that our whole life, be following him. In other words, we put our complete trust in Jesus. Complete trust in Jesus. And so, we have that. Now, 1520, where it gets to Pope Leo, contributions going down, he's angry, he needs to get rid of Luther. Because it seems to be Luther is the one who's promoting this. Um, so he writes a papal bull, a statement, saying, uh, Luther, you are causing great destruction, uh, in the church, you need to come to Rome and, and face your accusations. Well, Frederick the Wise knew that if Luther went to Rome, he would never come back. He would just be lost. Either he'd be killed or imprisoned forever. And so, um, they didn't do that. Luther writes back. He's saying, that's the Antichrist. Anybody who teaches that we are saved apart than Jesus alone is totally lost. They are against Christ. That's what anti means, antichrist, against Christ. And so Luther writes, which gets him in more trouble with the Pope. But there are other people who are saying, you know what, this Luther guy, he's right on this. As they begin to understand the scriptures and teach it, they're beginning to understand that Luther is right. So on December 10th, 1520, Luther burns the papal bull, which in other words is telling the Pope, eh, no way, no how. Forget you. Mm. Uh, and so that's what happens. Pope Leo X gets angry. He excommunicates Luther, meaning you're going to die outside the faith. We have all this. We have a meeting in a town of Worms, and Luther goes um, and he stands up. Now, what's very interesting is that Luther is going along the way. He's Wittenberg's here, Worms is here. As he is traveling, more and more people are, are hearing about this and they're coming out and cheering Luther so that by the time he gets to the city of Worms, um, some of the people writing back to the Pope are saying, this is what the people are saying, nine out of ten people are saying, long live Luther! Long live Luther! And the guy says, but take heart, Pope. That tenth person is saying, death to the Pope! Death to the Pope! By the time Luther gets the worms, he is, by all practical tense and purposes, he is popular. He is huge. He, his name is what around, everybody knows who Luther is in Germany. And hence, in Italy and the rest of Europe. He stands up, makes the great confession of faith, unless I'm convinced by scripture, oh. And plain reason, I do not accept the authority of popes or councils, for they contradict each other. My conscience is captive with the word of God. I cannot and I will not. Uh, can anything for a ghost against, it, uh, against my scotcher? My conscience is neither right 
nor say, God help me, or so help me, God help me. And that really, in the diet of the meeting in worms, um, is really when Luther takes this stand and says, no, I believe that we are saved by Jesus and Jesus alone and what he's done for us. So this was huge, huge when this happened. Um, and, and dealing with that. When Luther was getting ready to leave to go back to Wittenberg, um, he's kidnapped. Do you see that? Not really kidnapped, but he was taken to a place called the Wartburg for his own safety. Um, there he translates the Bible into English, or not English, into German. He's known as Knight George. Uh, when people ask him, who is that? That's Knight George. He would go to the local bar, pub, restaurant, and he would be sitting around with this big beard and reading his Greek New Testament. People are going, that's weird. Who is that? Well, that's Knight George. That's Luther, as we know it. Um, and this is the room that he translated uh, the Bible into German. Um, and it's still there, pristine condition. Obviously, they did some stuff to make that happen. Uh, there in the Wartburg. Um, he gets married in 1525 to a, a young lady called Edie Bambora. And then he dies in 14, or 1546. And they, back in those days, they would do death mass and death hands. Now, if you notice, his hands, his left hand is spread out, and his right hand naturally goes to this position, implying what? What, is, what, is, what did Luther have in his hand a lot? He's right. I mean, his hand went to that. If, if, um, if you were to... I have 50, no, more than that, 60 plus volumes of Luther's works, Luther's writings, in my study right now. That's just that. There, it's probably, that's probably maybe a, maybe a third of what he wrote, of what he wrote. He would write everything. Which leads us to the next part in our, our book, um, in, in talking about that. But before we get there, would you turn to uh, Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, verses 21 to 28. So, Romans 3, that box in the middle there. Your homework for today is to read Romans 21 and 28, and then summarize in your own words what that means. What, did, what Jesus is, and what he's done for you. Take three minutes to do that right now. So sit down, read that with your family or whoever there is with you, and... Write what that means. 21, 28.
Next week we'll finish up that lesson and then we'll move on to the worship. So lesson number three. And so you can run how you run here. I have to go work on the other side of the worship. Uh, just some, a couple other housekeeping things. Um, in this folder thing up here are sermon summary sheets um, that you can pick up here. Um, and you have that. Um, I don't have the uh, service project sheets, but it's just a matter of your name, your date, what you did, and have you and your parents sign it. All right? Enjoy the rest of your week. We'll see. I'll see you in person on Wednesday at Central True Thursday, actually. But we'll be back here next week. Um, in here. Okay. Oh, don't forget the acolyte schedule right before you leave up here. You're wrong. Is there a certain summer sheet that I can grab? Right there. Right here? Right there. You can grab I got them too. Just in case.